nice day for a hike, guys. Hey there, folks. Mike here. New video. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel. And today, I'm going to be tackling a through hike, attempt at a through hike, of the Guelph Radial Trail. And this one starts on the far east side of Guelph and follows the Aramosa River for a little bit and goes all the way to Limehouse, which should be an interesting hike, roughly 34 kilometers. And uh, as you can see behind me, it's still winter, middle of March, although today it's uh, <laughs> ice. It's supposed to get up to around four, I believe, at Celsius. 34 kilometers, started at about 9.30, quarter to 10. I'll have to uh, keep the pace halfway decent. Otherwise, I'll be hiking in the dark. But I do have my headlamp and I have a USB power bank, just in case. Side note, this is also the second of two trails that are required for the end-to-end -end badge that is offered by the Guelph Hiking Trails Club. So if you've been watching the channel, I did the Speed River Trail um, back in November, I think it was. So that's one of two, and the Radial Trail is the second. Ra uh, Speed River Trail was beautiful, highly recommend it. Uh, with taking pictures and doing a few videos. It took me a little bit more than five and a half hours or so, but, and that's end to end. But uh, by all means, there's multiple spots for you to park your car and check out the trail for a little bit or an hour or two if you want. Very easily done. Don't have to do the whole thing, of course. All right, folks, I gotta concentrate on the uh, icy trail here, so we'll check in a little bit later. Ciao. Well, folks, unfortunately, um, according to the guidebook, right here, uh, this trail is supposed to be blazed with orange blazes, but I have yet to come across one. And as you can see, the trail continues that way, but I've also been seeing signs of a trail on the other side. And the Aramosa River is right over there as well. You can probably see it in the background. And according to the guidebook, uh, initially, the trail is a wide gravel path. Turn left and cross an active railway line and proceed easterly on the abandoned electric train rail bed. Maybe the orange blazes pick up at that point. So, according to the map, I do cross the railway line and it's almost as if, like, you can see how it's been trodden down a bit. So I'm going to cross here. And hope that's the right way. And here's the other trail. And look at that, an orange blaze. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better. Nice day for a hike, guys. Ooh! Ah, it was a little close. <laughs> All right, that's enough adventure. Back to the trail. Hey folks, just a quick update. So that's the way that I came, which is uh, the, the trail closest to the railway line. But further back, maybe 200 meters, if that, it splices off and goes uh, downhill. 
uh, closer to the uh, river. Now, there's a marked stake there. It is orange. I don't know if that's a blaze. There's another one. But that spliced off trail heads down there. And according to the map, I meant to go down and under the bridge for Stone Road. So, watch yourself when you do this trail. Uh, unfortunately, it's just not very well blazed. So, down we go. And unless you're following my recording on all trails, which I will put into the uh, description for the video, I would strongly suggest that you pick up a guide, which is available through the Guelph Hiking Club's, or sorry, Guelph Hiking Club, Guelph Hiking Trails Club, there we go, uh, their website and um, their online store. Well, folks, I got two choices. I can either follow the trail as indicated by that orange blaze there and go down a road, yay. Or I can take the side trail, the Smith side trail, and go down there and meet up with the main trail later on. I think I'm gonna take the side trail. All right, folks. So apparently this is a four kilometer trail, but according to the guide should be all that much more scenic and I might cut down on some time to get to the end of the trail today so Well, folks, this is what happens when you don't look at your map properly. So, let me just give you a shot of this. So, that series of lines at the top of the page there is the Smith side trail. But if I zoom in a little bit closer, I did not see, or I wanted to see, that it didn't continue all the way through. So, I just spent two kilometers worth of time, maybe a little bit more, hiking from over here on Watson Road to the end, which is right here. So my options are to turn left and take a more scenic route, apparently, according to the guide, back to where I had started at Watson Road, or go back the way that I came. Because if I try to bushwhack this way, I'm just gonna hit water. So, unfortunately, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to make the end of the trail today. So I think I will take the side trail, uh, or the side, side trail and take the scenic route, as opposed to going the same way that I came. I'm just gonna put my book away. 
and enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, just passed somebody who had some very wicked boots on and was walking on ice as if it was nothing. Something tells me I'll be purchasing a pair of micro spikes at some point in the near future, especially trying to uh, navigate this. But uh, I'm going to need both my hands here, folks, so I will check in a little bit later, probably once I uh, come across a nice little outlook, according to the book, and uh, we'll let you know what I end up doing. Take care. Hey folks, so I uh, made it to be what looks like uh, the summit, for lack of a better term, uh, for the climb up back up to the, uh, uh, the other side trail for the Smith property. And as you can see, it has a very nice lookout. And unfortunately the sun is right behind me, so probably not the best for camera effects. Um, so yeah, a little embarrassing that um, I didn't take the time to uh, read the map correctly. Um, and also a little concerning for uh, people who try to follow the trail, meaning the, uh, the Guelph radial trail, uh, come across the side trail and um, um, there's like, you'd have to read the uh, signs in its entirety uh, perhaps to understand that it's a loop and not a, um, a thoroughfare. Um, so I can see um, a lot of people making the same mistake that I did. So I'm going to take a bit of a break, have something to eat, uh, get some coffee into me, because I brought my thermos, and um, I'll continue on and uh, see how far I get down Watson and uh, make a little bit more headway on the trail and then uh, decide if I keep going or if I wrap it up tomorrow. So today's only Saturday, so I have the weekend. And um, yeah, go from there. So read your map, double check what you think you're gonna be doing. Check in later. Here right, guys, now that I've done my break, just to show you what this outlook looks like. Very pretty, nothing but trees, but very, very pretty. Just to give you guys a little bit of an update, that's where I just came from. So Watson Road is maybe a kilometer or so down that, that way on the trail. And uh, this is, I believe, one of the Arkell Springs properties. As there's quite a big of an area for it. And there goes the trail that way. So roughly nine kilometers in, and that's the first radial line trail sign that I've seen since the uh, terminus at uh, Victoria Road. And this is the Arkell Springs Loop Trail to Starkey Hill, which I will not be taking as it is a loop and definitely not a shortcut. I double checked my map this time. So, Onward, friends. All right, folks, so just a little bit of an update since uh, I made a wrong turn. Uh, so that's the way that I had just come and there are absolutely no blazes from there to Arkell Road, which is what I was on. But all of a sudden, we have this, and a fork in the trail. And that is the orange blazed Guelph Radial Trail. So, and there you can see the turn as well. So I think what I had done, so, as you can see here, there's a side trail that comes down to Arkell Road. And I was coming through the main trail here, but then all of a sudden there were absolutely no blazes whatsoever. So I saw traffic 
on the road here. So I deked to directly to the road and came across the uh, Post Lynch town line. Now what's interesting of course is that on the map it says that you can turn left on the town line but on the road it's a T intersection so you can either go straight on Arkle or you can turn right onto the town line but you cannot turn left at least in terms of road. So I did find what appeared to be a little bit of a trail not quite a driveway but a trail of sorts that went uphill a little bit and I thought okay well worst case scenario is I'll either be walking parallel to or up to back to the main trail and that's exactly where I am at here so this junction so got a long ways to go yet <clears throat> uh, the river should be coming up very shortly lots of ice um, it's been a little tough going obviously uh, I have to stop and do a little bit of a stretch because the uh, trying to tense up and anticipate a fall or something like that is really doing a number on my legs um, it's approaching oh, what do we got here I'm trying to check out my watch uh, almost two o'clock and uh, I'd say a little bit more than a third of the way through the 34 kilometer trail so um, considering the way that or the progress that I'm making and the amount of sunlight that I'll have left um, more than likely I'll be calling it quits before too long and picking up where I left off tomorrow but uh, we'll see how far I get So I uh, was walking down First Line or Wellington Road 29, same road I guess, and uh, at Arkle I uh, turned off the road, went through a farmer's field and picked up the trail through a forested area as you can see. of ice and what's nature without a few gunshots out in the distance really nice little stream hey folks so uh, another little update here um, I'm 22 23 kilometers into my hike today and um, I think I'm going to uh, call it a day I'm just about to approach uh, Guelph Line. Um, I'm a little bit more than halfway to uh, to Limehouse, but it's uh, approaching four o'clock, which means I only have two, maybe two and a half hours of sunlight, but um, not hiking or walking for uh, the past three months or so has uh, obviously not done me any favors. So, um, Rather than uh, call it a day and rest up and uh, do the second half another day than to try and force myself to do something and uh, end up getting hurt or who knows whatever else. And uh, um, I'll be uh, definitely hiking at night, which is uh, adding a layer of um, problems and um, unnecessary risk um, on top of my existing uh, situation. So. Um, Needless to say, I'll be using the next uh, six weeks or so to uh, to get ready. I am uh, scheduled to do the peninsula section of the Bruce Trail in the first week of May. So I definitely have to get out of the house more and uh, get some kilometers and some steps in every day to uh, ramp up my physical conditioning. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, COVID weight has, uh, has uh, come back and haunted me again. So... Um, Anyways, uh, stay tuned, folks. Um, I'll uh, lump this and the next video for uh, for the radial trail in one. Uh, sorry, this 
hike and the second half into one video for you. But uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Uh, any questions, comments, leave them in the uh, uh, section below. And of course, like, subscribe, and hope to see you out there. Ciao.